it's in his uh, private bedroom, his personal bedroom. In the bathroom of that bedroom is where they found the substances and where they found mm -hmm. uh, a gun and some ammunition. It's like, how is that grounds for under the Second Amendment to charge anybody with a crime? Because you had a gun with the illegal narcotics. That's the crime, right? If, you, if they went inside there and just saw the guns, they would be okay. But seeing the illegal narcotics, it's like, oh, you that's a no, you can't have a gun while you have that. I think is it, is, am I am I am I confusing you guys? That it seems simple enough to me. I, I don't I don't get it. Um if he is so critical of, of the local government, why is he giving them um so much clear cut reason to go after him? Yeah, like like yeah, the, the streams, yeah, that's true. I but again, let's let's watch. And then you have the bail provisions that say because you've now been charged with this crime, you, you have no Second Amendment rights. You you lose your right to possess a gun uh, in Minnesota. Under no, not from what I heard, right? So it, it seems it seems like I'm going to be stopping this thing every three seconds. All right. The way Minnesota does it, I can't talk about it. I'm not going to talk about any places. The way the Minnesota does it, they give you an and an or. So anybody who's arrested with 25 grams of coke, is likely going to get like a fifty thousand dollar bond, right? That that's kind of like their standard thing, right? You get a fifty thousand dollars bond. Now, if you pay that fifty thousand dollars, you can just go free and live your life, right? No, no problem, no restrictions. You can have your guns, you can have this because you haven't been convicted. You're technically innocent until proven guilty. The bail amount is only to to give you that incentive to come back to every court appearance. You come back to every court appearance, they give you that bail amount back if you're found not guilty. So the bail is just to make sure that you can return to court um for you to return to court so they said nick you know what you want to keep all your rights keep the second amendment the ability to travel you take you give us fifty thousand dollars cash or bond and you can do whatever you want or or we can release you and you don't have to pay anything but to do that we're going you're going to have to follow these conditions like you have to give up your rights to the gun you have to give up your right to travel you have to do all this stuff. Now, you can keep those rights, but you can go, right? You can keep all that stuff, but you can go. Um, but you have to pay for it because you have to pay because you've been caught with all this. So the choice for Nick was you can pay your money and keep your guns, keep all your freedom to do that, or you can pay nothing, but you, here are the conditions that we expect for you. You got to come to come to court every day, do all this stuff, and you can't use guns and you can't leave the state. Nick said, from my understanding, he said, I'd rather not pay anything versus I'd rather pay the 50 grand. Gun, merely because they've also been charged with possession of some illegal substance. It's only been... See, and that, that's the one thing about Barnes. You have to be very careful about what he says. Criminally, remember he said criminally punishing someone. Bail is not criminal punishment. Bail is to say you, because you've got caught these serious charges that can lead you 25 years in prison, we want to make sure you come back to court. So we're going to, we're going to issue bail, 50 grand, right? Pay five or 50 grand. And you can go and live your life, but you're going to come back to court. If you don't come back to court, we get that bail money. Place. No allegation that he used the gun well no, the, under the influence. The None. report, the report mentioned a spent shell, which was near the Glock. Now he thought about, he's got to use the gun while under the influence. <laughs> <laughs> Since when? It's literally you have your arms while having felony amounts of gain. Like, what are you talking about? I don't know. It's, it's I'm sorry. It's just funny. It's like, what are you talking about? He doesn't have to be using the game with the gun. No, just, just having the gun with the game is the is a violation. That's the crime. That's the probable cause. They're simply saying if you possess an illegal substance, we're going to call that endangerment of a child to the child no that's not true there is no allegation at all that he has caused any harm to his children ever all right so maybe barn maybe this is new to barns but if i take my children and hold them over a bridge and wave them back and forth and then pull them back over and don't cause harm they're going to charge me with what's called endangering the welfare of a child. That doesn't mean I actually harmed the child, right? I endangered the welfare of the child because they could have been harmed. It's what's called recklessness. You're acting reckless. There's neglect, right? Where 
I don't feed the child or whatever. I just totally ignore the child. It's neglect. So I think Barnes simply doesn't understand that the charge is endangering the welfare of a child. Understand this. So let's say if I have a three-year-old in my living room and I put a loaded gun there, the state would say, I endangered the welfare. The child might not have been hurt. Cops come in and see the gun, see the kid. They'll be like, you endangered the welfare of that child. That's the charge. If I leave there, the cops will say, you endangered the welfare of the child by having the Coke and the kid together, right? They don't have to even use the Coke. So the endangering the welfare of a child happens to be with the circumstances the child is in. And in this case, and in every state, if you have children in the house with cocaine, it is presumptive that you are endangering the welfare of that child. There was a case just out of New York where the where the kids um, touched, I forgot, they touched something and they all overdosed on, um, I forgot the name, the, it was like in the Bronx where the kids touched something, they all overdosed on um, on meth or something like that. It was, it was a crazy story. And like even some of the adults had overdosed because they had touched the product or whatever. But anyway, that is what Nick is being charged with. He doesn't, you don't have to prove he hurt the child. You don't have to prove he intended to hurt, none of that. You just have to prove that the situation that he, the children were in, that Nick was in control of, was endangering the welfare of the child. And some of the things that endanger the welfare of a child are having illegal drugs in that particular same, same place. That's what he's being charged with. If and that's it? All of a sudden you're going to take that as a grounds for a search warrant? You're going to take that as a grounds to take away Second Amendment rights? You're going to take that as grounds to take away uh, care, custody, and control of children? You're going to use that to let child and dad? Did he just say they found something in some guy's bathroom? They found 25 grams of cocaine. <laughs> that does, it's a little different than saying... <laughs> I, I don't know. I got to rewind that. because did, did he not... If he'd have said they found 25 grams of in the guy's bathroom, then I think he's even when he found hold on, let me go back. I think it, it just kind of like slipped me. <laughs> it kind of like slipped by me. I want to be fair. I want to be fair. Let me see. <laughs> let me see what he said for this. They had none. They had All none. Right. All they did is some some and this will get to the Fourth Amendment issue now. The uh, I thought there was something more here. Not okay, you found something in a dude's bathroom. And that's it? All of a sudden, you're going to take that as a ground for a search warrant? He did say it. He said you found something in the, in the, in the bathroom. No, it's not something. It's 25 grams of pizza, baby. That's what they found. What are you talking about? They just found something. Or other or gambling or other abuse, you know, addictive addiction-related issues causing issues with children. Yeah, but we don't presume things like that. We don't assume that everybody that has an issue, that we, you, you have to prove it with actual facts. And, you know, the... Uh, yeah. So if someone, so for instance, let, let's see if, can we prove that Nick has a drug issue with actual facts? Well, my first piece of evidence is the live streams that he's been having for the past couple of months, right? That doesn't seem like, that seems like somebody. The fact that they found 25 grams of coke in his house. Yeah. I think we have some facts that may, may lead us to believe that he may have a drug problem. You know, just those two facts alone, maybe, like me again, I'm, you know, would it would it would it lead a reasonable person to believe that? I don't know. If you're, you know, or would a reasonable person say no, no? Matter of fact, who's out there right now saying Nick doesn't have a drug problem? Put one in the chat if you don't believe Nick has a drug problem. That's what I thought. Okay, this is a detention warrant. This is saying this is the grounds for all of this. And I thought, okay, there's going to be a lot of details of what the pa the, the pastor said that. No, that is not going to be in that, and that's not a. All right. No, that's not going to be in there. Only thing that's going to be in that probable cause document is what led to the arrest of Nick and the people in the house. And the thing that led to those, that arrest was them finding the illicit drugs in the house based on the search warrant. Now, I think Barnes has missed the point that he doesn't have the affidavit for the search warrant because then you can look at that and then determine whether they have probable cause to be there in the first place. So he, so, so again, I think he's conflating the search warrant affidavit, which we do not have that would tell us all this information versus the probable cause document that, we, that we've that we been seeing. And that probable cause document is just saying, there's coke in the house, we're arresting him because we found coke in his house, period. Because that pastor's complaint was that what was more like, hey, I got a basic concern. It was not, here's this specifics, this specific, this specific. So again, 
this is where he's missing the assumption. This specific, this specific, this specific. The assumption is, is that that's what's in the affidavit or the search warrant. But that specific deficit, that's what's in the affidavit. But we don't have it. It's, you know how bad it could be? 